Okay, welcome back to MA Training Lesson 3. This is part 2. If you haven't gone and watched part 1, uh, go back and watch part 1 first, because otherwise where we are right now will probably make very little sense to you. Uh, in this video we will be setting up MA to work with the fixtures we've added, and we're doing that. You'll also notice I've added a little consoletraining.com watermark at the bottom of the video. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'm not a real big fan of watermarking things, but we'll see how it goes. Alright, so we've got our fixtures. To recap, we've got two Mac 600s, two Mac 700s, an LED park hand, which we've turned into an LED lighting bar. You can actually see the little LEDs in there, which is kind of cool. And we've got our atomic strobe and two dimmers, and yeah, a drum kit. So we're going to set up all our groups, and then we're going to start pro programming and creating pellets and doing all that kind of stuff. And then once I'm finished, I'll upload this file to consoletraining.com, and you can play with it yourself and tell me what you think. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prevent myself from being able to move any of the fixtures, so I've disabled being able to select them. And I'm going to close this, and I'm going to put myself in a position where I can see all my fixtures and plot from. So we'll go here. And we'll drop the lights a bit. So it's a bit darker. Now, that help thing, you can turn it off by going view and disabling help elements. And that disables that. So, let's begin. So, from MA. We click Tools, we click Auto Create, and we auto create groups for our Mac 600s, our 700s, and everything. And then we go. In this case, you can either create all groups, which will create. Actually, let's do both. So we'll create all groups, and we'll also create single groups. And then we'll go right click and go ah pools groups and we'll grab the edge of that and we'll drag it up so we've created groups for all our fixture types strangely it hasn't oh no I know why it hasn't created groups for those and yeah so a couple of things it's done I've, I've created both so normally if I would just gone create odd even groups it would create yeah, that was actually really stupid of me, because I don't have that many fixtures. So it's created all groups. All groups would create three groups, grouped buttons for each type of fixture, so it would create all of them, which would select all of them, or just the the odd or even ones, but since there's only two, that sort of lacks in point. So I'm going to delete some groups. So we're going to delete that, delete that, and all I'm doing is clicking on delete. I sh know there's a keystroke for them, but I don't care. And then we're going to rearrange stuff. So, I'm going to organize them so that they're right together. So I click move, and I click on war the location I want it moved from, and then I select the location I want it moved to. You could probably also type this, but you're referencing the little numbers. So let's do that for this one. So we'll go move, group 13, two, three, will that work? No, it won't. It's not going to let me do that. Okay. And I've also just renamed that. Great. Turned on shortcut mode. Okay, so we go move that to there, and now we need to rename it. So if you want to rename anything, as long as you've got it selected, you can just start typing. So we're typing Mac 600, and it's number two. So there we have all our 600s, or both of our 600s. And I'm going to go and do the same thing for our 700s. Move, move. That selects our dimmers, so I'm going to move those up there. That one's there. Oops, not copy. Move, move, clear, clear, clear. And it's duplicated those, so I'll delete those. Delete, delete. And we'll move our 
atomic over there, and we'll move our LED park can over there. Cool! So our groups are set up a bit randomly. So next we're going to add smart, which takes up roughly three spots. We've I've shown you smart before, basically that gives you all the options, actually it'll prefer four that's available. And it depends on the fixtures you've grabbed. And then we're going to do one line of position presets, one line of color, and should we do any others? Nah. What else have we got to throw in there? Nothing really. Ah, we'll go one line of effects and we'll create our own effects. Cool. So, for this demo, I'm going to leave sync selection on so you can see what fixtures I'm grabbing. Uh, but when you're actually programming, I would advise turning them off. And that's something else I might do. I might grab all the fixtures that do CMY. Oh, they don't do CMY, that's RGB. The, uh, LEDs, RGB. So I'll grab all my moving head fixtures and I'll create a group for those. So to do that, we select the fixtures you want and we click store. This is also another way of creating groups. And we'll call them all movers. Okay, so that's done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create and unite my color palettes. You could go set up, auto create, and create your own presets which will give you all the color presets but the issue with doing that is, is even if you've got two Mac Martin fixtures that have the same CMY they'll create different color flags for them and different color options and that's alright because technically a 700's green is very different to a 600's green so really you should be using those, but for me, I create United ones simply for the fact that even out on a real job where I'm operating real fixtures, I'll set the look up and I'll say, yep, this is the green, they look the same, and I'll create the same. So when I'm out on a job and I go, all right, these fixtures need to be green, I click green and I know that it'll be the same color. So we'll select our 600s first, we'll clear, select our 600s, we'll run them up, and we can either click the at button twice to bring them to 100, or you can click once and go full or open. Or if you've got really high powered fixtures, you can click on them and go all at, say we'll go 20% and enter. And that's them at 20%, which is fairly useless. So we'll bring them up, bring them a bit left, and I'll show you a trick with MA to get fixtures to cross over each other. Where it says align, if you have two arrows looking at each other, there is a technical name for that, I know. That's not the one I want, is it? It's that one, I think. Is it? I can't tell. Oh, no, it's not going to let me do it. Come on. Yep. Uh, too far. And... Oh, it's not lighting his face. Oh. So there you go. So that's our 600s in place. And we'll do color mix and we'll create one for green. Or we'll go blue. And we go store. No, we don't. Actually, yes, we'll do it. We'll go, we'll do it now. I'll show you how it's done. So we go blue and we name that blue. And then green. And I bet I've annoyed someone by not going RGB. I've gone R B C. Uh, so that's green. And then we go red. Which And for those that I've annoyed by not doing it in order, I'll fix it. 
So we'll go and we'll move green to there. Cool, so we've created color palettes for those 600. So I can click red, green, or blue. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the colors for the 700s, which are a lot brighter, because they're 700 watts. So we're gonna do our same align trick, slowly. Oops, oh, you're not gonna let me do it, are you? So we slowly bring them in, we turn off a line, and we bring them up so they're actually on the person. And then we do the same trick we did there. So that's R. And then we click on red, which we've already created, and it's going to prompt me. It's going to ask, do I want to overwrite, merge, remove, what do I want to do with the data that's already there? And in this case, we want to merge it. So we're merging them. Whoops. Why does it think the blue? Ah, oh, because I've already had these up. So, that was stupid of me. I didn't clear between recreating. So I'll need to set these to red. And then we click update. Update preset, and we're back to red. Cool. So we click green on these, and then we select our 700s, and we do the same thing. And we go update, we click green, and we go merge. And we do the same for blue. We select blue. Oh, with these selected, we go blue. Then we select these and we go store, blue, merge. And then we should be able to select both sets of fixtures and go red, green, blue. Red, green, blue. And while we're here, we're also going to save these positions. So right now what we're doing is we're saving the pan tilt location and nothing else. So we'll call this drummer. When I can spell. And there we go. So now we are able to do this. So we'll clear. We select our 600s. We turn them on. We select green. And then we go go to drummer. We can do the same things with the 700s we've just done. Turn them on. Go to drum and select any color. So we can have blue for those and say green for those. Cool. So let's run up our dimmers. Now we can either do that via our group menu like this or because they're generic fixtures we can click on channels down here and they also appear as channels. So there's one and there's two, and we can also use the flash button below them. So we'll set up that. We'll turn on. Let's see what we can actually get out of this fixture. So we go. So we're playing with the RGB fixture now. I'm going to turn selection off because it kills what I can see of those RGBs. So we go dimmer, we go back to encoder, we bring the dimmer up and we see how bright red is. There we go. Bright red, green, blue. And if we're feeling fancy, we can also add this. So we'll go store, blue, merge, turn off green, store, merge, and then red, store, red, merge. And there we go. So, let's record a scene. Now we've set everything up. Oh yes, the atomic, right. So we'll drop the lights completely. Turn off the LED. Grab the atomic. 
put the dimmer up to 100. And we'll see that that fairly basically kills our frame rate. So it's completely killing our frame rate, really. But there you go. Okay, so finally, before we, we're done here, let's record a scene into our executors. So, how are we going for time? 15 minutes, cool. So, we'll bring these back in position. Drummer red, and dimmer one and two at 50. Drop our lighting. And then we'll turn our RGB on as green. Make it on. <laughs> you can hardly see that. And then, whoops, I moved my position. Oh no, I need to see where I really am. Oh, I'm upside down. So we go orbit and we put it back to the position we were. So, so let's record that. So we click record and we hold down and it gives us the option to record all active values or a bunch of other stuff. So we go store there and then the next thing we do is we move our 600s a bit. Just as an example, so we go encoder, we go back to that, we pan our 600s around, and we make them green. We grab one of our 700s and we make it tilt back, pan round. I probably should have also put in an off white or a white one so I can drop the color spec to white because I haven't done that. So we'll make it white, we'll drop in a gobo, we'll say that one. MA for some reason for me doesn't like positioning gobos exactly correctly. You can see I've got a custom gobo in there for the 700. But there we go. We'll rotate it a bit. And we'll use its onboard color wheel and we'll make it <laughs> a color you can actually see, so red. And then we'll go store. And when we click on executor, it'll give us the same options. It'll go, do you want to overwrite, merge, remove, or create a second queue? In this case, you want to create a second queue. So we click create second queue. And there we have it. So if we clear, nothing will happen. We bring that up. That's our first one. And we click the go button. And it'll go around there. Now, if we click on the queue list, we can select whether we want it to be a follow on queue and we'll do that and then we'll add a 10 second fade and we can also add an out fade if you've used moving, oh, not moving head desks but uh, intelligent desks before you'll know all this so now if we run this it'll have a 10 second fade and we can watch on the actual queue list what it's doing Now we can see it's basically just going back and forth and doing that. We can also change our dimmer paths. So there you go. That's uh, that's setting up a demo file. I'll upload this demo file exactly the way it is now, so you can have a play with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to use consultraining.com's contact page to contact me, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. And if a lot of questions come up, I'll be sure to use the Frequently Asked Questions page, which I'm yet to upload. Anyway, hope these have been helping. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day.